Hey guys, welcome to the video. I got Kevin here from Modern Self Reliance. As you guys know, he is an off-grid expert and we're gonna be featuring a new product here from Renogy, the Lycon 5000. But you guys are probably interested in what we got going on for this main part of the video, which is a mono e mono channel versus channel fishing competition. We're gonna see who of the brothers is the best fisherman. And by the end of this video, we're gonna have more in-depth knowledge of the Renogy so you guys can figure out if it's a product for you. Down below in the description, there's gonna be a link to a whole range of Renogy products that you guys can check out to see if it's for you. What do you think so far? So far so good, we got the thing unboxed, we've got it fired up, I, I plugged it in the other day, we got her fully charged so we can actually see what it's gonna do. Well, I have good expectations for this thing because it's a massive unit, bigger than any battery that we've ever featured so far, but no matter what, there's probably a product on the Renogy line for you guys. So again, check those links down below. Let's jump into the action right now, find out who of the brothers is the best fisherman. Let me tell you, this is an intense battle you guys are really gonna enjoy. All right, guys, welcome to Linden Hatchery, Linden Trout Pond. I have a, have a plan today. We're gonna go head to head. Uh, Kevin's here from Modern Self-Reliance. We're here to pick up the fish for the pond, but I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a fish off. How's it going? It's going well. Don's gonna get a chance to catch a fish in a second too, uh, but I wanna, I wanna see who of the brothers is better at fishing. I already know the answer. But there's gonna be a- Me. There, There's gonna be a twist. Oh. Is, that, is that camera rolling? No. Not yet? Okay, go fire that camera on because there's going to be a lot of action. We have uh, a bunch of mystery tackle box. We have a post fly. Post fly is a new product. It's kind of along the same idea as mystery tackle box. Here, I'll hand you over to Don and uh, we'll keep this rocking. There we go. Hey, we're good. We're filming. We have, we have two things to choose from. You have the fly rod and you have a spin rod. Okay, the spin rod regular tackle you're going to use the mystery tackle box if you choose this as your weapon i don't know Are what you, am i doing i'm not a fisherman you're thinking about it okay so we have basically we, the setup is we have a we have spin tackle and we have fly rod have you ever fished with a fly rod before yes no i've been in a field and i've whipped it a little a couple <laughs> times back and forth bang okay so my recommendation well i'm going to give you a recommendation i'm going to say the the spin rod is going to be a lot easier however with the spin rod, there's going to be handicaps, okay? Because if you just start fishing right straight away, you're going to have a massive advantage over somebody who's fly fishing for a number of reasons. So choose wisely. Do you want to go with the post, the post fly tackle? This is your tackle to choose from. I want to go with this one because it says trout on it. Or do you want to use the mystery tackle box and the spin tackle? I'm going to, I'm going to. I don't know, what's your recommendation? I don't know. Do you think you're gonna be able to cast the fly rod? Sure, I'll just throw it or something. If you just throw it, it's gonna get all tangled up. I'll go with the spin rod, I don't, I don't. Go with the spin rod. So Kevin's gonna go with the spin rod. I bet you I can use a stick with a string on it. <laughs> he thinks it's gonna be just that easy. We're at a, we're, we're shooting fish in a barrel, essentially. Well, like there's. Yes and no. If you can't get out to where the, the uh, fish are, you're definitely not gonna be catching any fish. So we're gonna turn you Turn you on. Four cameras, man. Four camera, four camera operation. We've got the camera over there. We're recording, recording, recording. Okay, so. It's good, good. Okay, so part of the handicap with the fly rod is my fly is already on the line. I've got my line already set. Um, so I've already chose my weapon through my post fly. I'm already rigged, I'm ready to go. So as part of the handicap, well, I gotta, I gotta. No, you have to stay here. You stay here. I'm gonna... No, you have to stay here. You stay here. Okay, don't follow me. That one opened up. <laughs> this one's not far enough in the bush. There we go. <laughs> All right, follow me, Don. <laughs> that one opened up. <laughs> yeah. So there's, a, there's an advantage. I've got a little bit of an advantage. I've got the rod up in the tree. Um, Kevin has to start here. We're both gonna start from scratch. All right, so are you ready? 
What? Are you ready? I gotta go, okay, sure. You gotta go collect your thing. <laughs> I'm only going in one box. You have to collect your things, choose your lure. There's a snap, there's a snap on there, so you should be able to get on just fine. All right, ready? So pick your weapon carefully. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, go. So do I follow Kevin? Yeah, you can follow Kevin. This one's got junk everywhere. Look at it. Oh, there's like... There's like hooks and stuff on the ground. Are in a fish pond. Gonna let it catch up a little bit. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't cast yet. I felt too bad. <laughs> well, guys, if you're anything like me, you're gonna enjoy the Post Fly box. It's very much like the Mystery Tackle box in that it's a subscription model, and you're gonna get a new box every single month. And what's in the box is going to be a surprise. But like me, if you're getting back into fishing, or you're an existing fly fisherman or you're looking for a little bit of variety, this box is for you because it has literally a whole variety of different things you can try. On this particular adventure, I decided to go with a nymph. Originally, I went with a wet fly, but that one fell off. And when I switched over to the nymph, I had some really good action. I didn't want to use a dry fly in this situation because obviously there's a lot of surface uh, wind and that's obviously affecting the visibility of me being able to see the fly on top of the water and also the fish being able to see that dry fly sitting on top. So dragging something really quick like a nymph or wet fly below the surface is essentially where you're going to get the most action, especially on waters that are not clear. But you're going to learn all these things and more as you guys get into fly fishing. So use my code BEARDSMAN10, that'll get your first box for $10 and you can use the code BEARDSMAN for Mystery Tackle Box, and that, again, is gonna get a sweet discount on brand new subscribers. So guys, check out PostFly, and if you're not into fly fishing, check out Mystery Tackle Box, and you're gonna get all the original goods that you've come to expect from two great companies, PostFly and Mystery Tackle Box. All right, watch watch my back cast, watch my back cast. Hey, don't go there, you're gonna be in the back cast. Get out, it. get out, get out. You're not, Safe zone over there. All right, we're in the water. I gotta get out further. It's really tricky because it's super windy here too right now. I feel like I gotta take this one. I don't know why. Here's first cast. If we get one first cast, first cast. Come on. If Kevin gets in the water, we're in trouble. Oh, we're in big trouble. Oh, come on. Okay. All right, we're out there. We're in fish territory now. Come on, let's go fish. So we're gonna we're using a wet fly here, and we're just gonna do on the slow retrieve. Don't fish on that side. Come on the other side of me, or you're gonna get a hook in the face. I cannot promise you don't get a hook in the face. Uh oh, he's in the water now. We got two casts in. I got to get out a little bit further without getting tangled up. I'm not the best fly fisherman in the world. You in the water yet? He's trying to cheat. That one's dead, it doesn't count. You gotta catch a live one, an edible one. Oh, fourth cast here, we're out in the water. Come on, fish. Kevin's in the water now. How's your cast going? I'm not gonna give him any pointers, but I don't think he's doing it right. What did you pick? A spinner thing. A spinner thing, he says. All right. Oh, I thought I missed the bite there. Had a bump. There's no fish in here. That's not the problem. There's lots of fish. Lots of fish in here. You know, Kevin's gonna try something else. That's the wrong box. It says trout on it. That's all fly fishing stuff. Now I gotta work on your rod. Warm water, salt water. That won't work. You guys are in my cast zone. Gotta do a roll cast. Can't do a roll cast too good here. That's all fly stuff, it won't work. 
Kevin's under the impression that I that I bamboozled him. Where's that fish jumping? Where's my box? Oh. This thing. Why do I go with this thing? Guys are in my I can't cast if you're there. You're gonna get a hook in the face. I can't go on the ground. Wrong spot. Hang on, give me a minute. Oh, oh, no. My technique is to mimic what the pellet looks like. Ah! What do you have on there? A jig I head. I tried to mimic the food. He, he's got a plain jig head on there. What does the food look like? <laughs> oh, I see. Get get out of the cast zone. I got a raffle. Like it looks like a big bug. This thing? Yeah, I'd go with the raffle. All right. A big bug. It's like it's a minnow. That's what I would use today. Ah, the food looks like this. I was going for what the food looks like. Probably doesn't taste like this, but. Ow. Ow, it's in my finger. Pretty hard to catch a fish when you don't even have a <laughs> I lost my fly. I didn't, I didn't have a fly on the whole time. What the heck? Dude. Oh my gosh. I'm like, there's something wrong here. Like, how do I not have a fish yet? All right, now it's game on. Watch yourself there, man. Got the line all behind it. The trout. Here it is. The, I, I was fishing. It pulled off on the picnic table. The whole time I was fishing, it was stuck on the picnic table. Unbelievable. Talk about a handicap. <laughs> <laughs> catch, a, catch a fish with a bare hook, with, with a bare line. I lost all my tippet there too. Oh my god, dude. Talk about a bad day fishing. How about try fishing without any lure on in a fishing competition? Think it'll work better with a hook on it? This this will be the trick. This will be it. Oh I got oh, it. Oh, oh. oh! Oh he lost one! Did you lose it? I got the technique on. Oh I just missed one! Oh no! <laughs> I missed the hook set on that one too. Oh, come on. All right, now we're going. Come on. Oh, oh I missed him again. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe that. Get it further. Increase your retrieve. Ah! <laughs> you forgot to set the hook. I can't believe I was fishing the whole time without a stupid lure on there. How's that even possible, Don? I have no idea. And I just missed two bites. There's another one. Oh, I missed him again. I missed him. Is this fishing supposed to be relaxing? You're in trouble now. I'm in the zone. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, I might have lost him. Oh no! Oh! This one's jumping. This one's, I this one's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> huh? oh. <laughs> I got the fish on first. Ah, <laughs> uh, I got him. <laughs> oh, what a fight! Oh, we should have brought the net up here, Don. Yeah. Uh, 
What a fight! I might have to fight him off the reel here. Oh! <laughs> go, go run and grab the net. I go grab the net. Quick! Hurry up! My arm's getting weak. <laughs> my wrist, my wrist is dying. Let's <sighs> go bigger. Oh, he's got so much juice left in him. Keep your arms in tight. Keep your arms in tight. And then when he gets close, then scoop in. Pull your arms back. No, behind you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do it fast, but just go definitively. When he's ready, go, go, go. There you go. Whew. All right, well, let's call it a tie. I was going to call it a tie. Uh, sure, whatever. I fished the whole tie without a hook on there. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as I had my hook on there, I had it within, I had bite within like three casts. And then, uh, and then finally got one. There you go, that's fun. So, Kevin knows how to fit. I get, I had to give him some pointers though. I had to help him with the hook set. And then, I had uh, a long lure run for the two, the first two. And then faster retrieve and uh, more aggressive hook set and then had it. So the, the crankbait was the, the trick. He had a little jig head, a little black jig head on, trying to imitate the food. But honestly, if you put, trout are predatory, so if you put, and there's lots of them here, so it doesn't take long to find a predatory one. And the spinner, eh, you're, the spinner, you were going too slow on the spinner. The spinner has to be more aggressive, and obviously it helps put a worm on that, because it's not as erratic, it's more just spinny spin. So anyway, but a fly, trout love fly, so there was a little bit of an advantage there. Although, you know, I handicapped myself, <laughs> not on purpose. Anyway, that's it. Oh, we got some. We got some trout to eat, and that was fun. Cool. Did you have a good rush? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> well, guys, what do you think? Who won that challenge? I keep flip-flopping between whether it was a tie, a legit tie, or that uh, it was like you know because it was a double header, we both had a fish all at the same time, so technically we both caught the same fish at the same time, or the fact that Kevin landed it first with 10-pound test line, whereas I carefully and sportingly reeled the fish in on fly uh, at a massive disadvantage because I never had a fly to begin with. So I guess you guys are going to probably have to write down below who you think won. I think Kevin still thinks he won because he landed the fish quicker and faster, although technically I hooked it first. So it's going to be a pretty big debate and you guys are going to add that down below. What do you think? I don't know. We'll have to look at the footage. Depends how it was edited. <laughs> I edited it true to how it how it happened. Um, you know, as best to true to nature. So, what do you think? You still think you, you, th you think you won because you landed it first? You think that was the challenge? Well, you we got really... to go the details of, of of what the actual competition was. I well, think was, we really need to write out to the pick rules first. A fishing pole out of a tree. <laughs> So I think that kind of evened it up, and I was fishing with a rock at the start. But the handicaps I had planned for you didn't act to, to actually come to fruition because I actually waited for you to come back even after tripping the bush before I fished, and then I spent the first 10 minutes fishing without a freaking lure to begin with. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Is that user error or is that uh, you know part of just the the luck of the presentation on that morning? So like you you presented better on that day. And so you ended up winning the competition. Anyway, you guys continue that down below. I think Kevin's gonna say he won. And I'm gonna say, I, I gotta say I won, plus it was probably a tie. So anyway, both fish you guys out at the same don't time. be biased. And I'll also go to Kevin's channel and heckle him if you think he did a bad job fishing. But I think he did good actually for not being a fisherman. He did pretty good, landed a fish. I didn't touch it at the end. I used the little, the little <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't, to get out. he wouldn't touch it. So you lose points there too. It's slimy. It was pretty slimy. So we've got this uh, Renegy worked out. Uh, don't X out of the video yet because there's still more to come. We still have to stock the pond, but I want to talk more about this unit here. It is a beast of unit. If you guys aren't familiar with Renegy, it is one of the top leading brands of off-grid uh, batteries uh, globally. And it runs like the top three out of 10 on Amazon for solar. It can be wired to solar. That's an option as well. And you can actually wire this directly into a house, a supplementary power, but you will need the help of an electrician. All right, guys, so this Lycan 5000 power pack is one of the largest packs that I've ever tested. It is about five times larger than any pack I've ever tested. It's got 4.8 kilowatt hours of power. That means it can power a thousand watt device for up to five hours. So if your wife wants to blow dry her hair for five hours straight, it can do that. 
You want to toast toast for five hours? You can do that. You can scale this thing up to, I believe, 19.2 kilowatt hours. You have to check that to be exact sure, but it is scalable. So if you want larger packs, you can add on to this guy. And what I found pretty cool is you can run it straight off the app here so you can figure out how much is being used. So you don't got to run over the unit, although you can if you want. You plug it into the wall with a T-slot, an optional T-slot adapter, you can actually charge this thing with either the AC adapter or with solar. But if you've got both going at the same okay. time, yeah. you can charge this thing in just under an hour, up to 80% capacity, which is crazy fast for a battery if you've ever charged a battery. Especially for something this size. What you do is you plug it into the pack like that, and then you plug it into your T-slot at home, and it's usually your kitchen plug. Unlike other packs that we've tried in the past, this thing is weather sealed. It has rubber grommets around pretty much all of the outlets and inlets. You guys got a big chest freezer, lots of food in there, power outage, you don't want that to spoil. Lycon's got you covered. Simply plug her in and you're off to the races. Now all that expensive food is not gonna go to waste. We've got the kettle fired up here, but it'll run any small kitchen appliance that you have or any small appliance for that matter. So you got toaster, you got your air fryer, you got your kettle. Uh, coffee kettle, you got your water boiling, um, and then it'll also run a fridge. So obviously you can run your chest freezer, you can run your fridge. So you guys can get a standard 20 amp power bar, which will expand, expand the number of things you can plug in at the same time, just as you would a normal 20 amp output uh, plug in your house. So you could run, you know, computer and your toaster at the same time. And then down below here, you've got your 30 amp output, which means you can plug in uh, standard RV. Again, use that link down below and that's gonna get you a whole range of Renergy products. And we're gonna be setting this up in the future down at the log cabin with solar panels. They are on the way, so keep an eye out for that. We're gonna do a more of a long-term test to find out if this is a good unit to put in, say, your house or your log cabin or your camp or cabin or any kind of off-grid situation. We're gonna let you guys know exactly how it turns out in the long run, so guys, stay tuned. And now let's go stock our pond full of delicious trout. So those post fly kits, they come with not just lures, they've got a set of pliers in there, which is gonna come in handy right now because we're gonna take, Kevin's trout is pretty well hooked. Uh, obviously the flies, they're designed to come out pretty easily. But uh, yeah, you get a whole bunch of cool stuff inside your kit. It seems to have uh, de-hooked itself. <laughs> Probably it's a lot harder to do when it's flopping around. There we go. Oh, it did de-hook itself. You just barely had that guy hooked. He was well hooked when I caught him. <laughs> yeah. Nice big, I don't know, it's probably about a four or five pounder. Clean fish, look at that. Don's eating good tonight. <laughs> which one's which? This one's mine, it's got a little dirt on it. Oh, mine's bigger then. It's not about the size. It's who <laughs> caught it first. <laughs> like three, four pounders. This pond is full of fish. You guys want to come, like bring a kid here and you don't have to mess around with all the other not fun stuff about fishing and just Pull, pull a picnic up. There's picnic tables here everywhere. Bring your food, bring your whole family, have a sit. How many fish are in there? Oh, I don't know, a lot for sure. How many would you guess? Oh, I don't know, four five, or five thousand, thousand, something like yeah, that? That's oh yeah, a, for sure. There's that's what ton. I was guessing, about four or five thousand. Yeah, there's a ton in there. Yeah. Um, it's great fishing. A lot of the time, a lot of streamer action. I don't really get on the fly. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I did the fly today. Yeah. I get, I get priority. It's not even open yet, right, for another couple months. Yeah, June, May, about June, May 2 4 yeah, in June, June, yeah. Yeah, June 4th is yeah. what I heard Clarkson open because he's doing lots of stocking. Like two, two million fish you guys put out this year. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, it was a good year. Yeah. Sure. That is an awesome year. So you guys can come down in here and have a good family fish, right? Right on. That's yeah, the thing. Sure. You work the booths, you clean the fish. I do. I do both. Yeah, we'll bring it around. We'll help you fish. If you've never fished before, pretty much anything, really. No license. No license. You come in here with nothing. We'll give you rods, reels, everything. Tackle, worms. worms. We set you up. Yeah. So it's a good. Yeah. It's a good way to go, especially if you guys are just starting to fish. Um, sure. And you have kids, you don't want to mess around with like sitting in the boat and motor and just like the hassle of everything that goes along with fishing yeah. and kids. This is a good place to start. For so. sure, yeah. And you're almost guaranteed to catch a fish. Yeah, we do guarantee. Fish. <laughs> yeah. If you can't catch a fish, they will ca catch one for you, right? We'll make sure you go home happy. And, and you have, you still have that uh, open tank where you could just like grab a fish if you just want yeah, to come for in. Sure. So if you so come in, you don't have any fish. Yeah, we'll get one. We'll get one out of the tank for you, and we'll set you up. Yeah. So they have so. a they have a special tank where they just put them in. You can just like pick the fish you want, more or less. Yeah. And sure. I mean, every fish is the same. Yeah. And clean it, and then you can go home and eat fresh fish, for which sure, is yeah. a pretty sweet deal. Definitely not a prime 
example of aeration. But That's good. Oh, we're still moving. Is there air still? Go. Come in, let him go. It's like a ridiculous obstacle course. Winded. John, your turn. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about a new sponsor we have. Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops is sponsoring the channel, which is wicked awesome. You guys all know about the fishing and hunting supplies, but they also have, uh, they've got clothing there. They've got housewares, and of course they've got camping. I picked up this uh, Cabela's Quick and Thick. Uh, Kevin was saying we should seed it and grass it because of the erosion issues. And we got water rushing down this hill. Well, not rushing down, but you know what? And it's eroding this air edge of the of the uh, pond and so he's like we'll just plant some grass i'm like no dude we can do one better and we can actually attract and feed some animals so this is a mixture it's got uh you know clover chicory ryegrass uh brassicas um, it's got a whole bunch of things so it's like a springtime uh plant thing planting crop overseed and uh, we can plant it all along the back here and maybe draw in some uh, you know rabbits and turkeys and probably deer when the season rolls around anyway I threw some feed in the pond the fish are still looking uh, lethargic <laughs> I don't see any dead ones I think we did okay as far as putting them in I think they're fine but uh, it's cold here and the water is cold so they're not super duper active right now but I think we're in good shape and plus the feed that I put in is floating feed and I think they're accustomed to uh, a sinking feed so it kind of it floats a little bit and then it sinks uh, but the stuff it has, they have to grab it right away. I actually blew, a lot of it blew over to the edge here, so they're not able to grab it right away. But it's going to eventually circulate back around and, and it'll sink. But they'll get accustomed to that. We do have some sink feed down at the bottom we can try. But uh, I think they're just kind of settling in. Uh, aerators are working good. From That's from the dugoutdude.ca. If you guys want to get grab yourselves an aerator. Where's the aerator? How come I'm not pointing at it? You can't really see it. Anyway, aerator's right over there. And... Uh, yeah, dugodoo.ca. There's two versions of the seed, actually. One you can just spread on top, uh, which is the one we got, incidentally. And then there's another one where you have to bury it a little bit. As a general rule for seeds, as seeds go, the size of the seed is exactly how much you should bury it below the soil level. So if you have a small seed, you only have to bury it a little bit or put it on top. And if you have a big seed, like say a bean seed, you would bury it, I think it's twice the size, twice the size. So bean seed that's about that big, you would bury it about two inches or so, an inch or an inch and a half. So we've got a pretty good base here. And this will work as a, well, we're not gonna call it a food plot. We're just gonna call it an overseed um, erosion control for homesteading, how about that? And if an animal happens to come by and eat it, all the better. What's the plan? There's a fish, fish food. Uh oh, flew away. Flew away. I don't know, it just looks like grass seed. So somehow we're gonna try to make it even mix, even spread. By hand. Up the air. By hand. No, if I throw it in the air, it's going to go everywhere. By each individual seed. This is supposed to plant an acre. We might be aggressive here and plant... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. 
It's all an experiment. Get rid of that. Trying to mostly focus on like the edges here to shore them up. And then we're gonna hope it rains after this. Just like planting grass seed. I think there's machines that do this, but today I'm the machine. And it is for forecasted to rain today, so. We should be in good shape. So oh, guys, I just got home and check this out. I got my new skunk trap from Princess Auto ordered online. Look at that thing, it's got a cool trap door. Looks like you can catch skunk, squirrels, and opossums, or possums. We call them possums here. You guys, we're getting back in the channel, so I'm glad to have you guys along. And I want to thank you for, uh, for joining me. And uh, a lot more to come. As you can see, we're getting back into the groove of things, and I'm happy to be back out there. So thanks for sticking around, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.